Welcome to part two of the largemouth bass skin mount. I'm Aaron Staling. As you can see, our bass is completely dried and it's time to actually start the process of removing all of our drying carding and then doing the fin repairs and the fin gluing to make them resilient and also doing the finishing on the back of the seam. That'll be the extent of this video. There are three kinds of methods of doing fins. One is just using a fin glue. Another one is using a fin glue and silk span. And a third method is using a fin glue and art paper. And this particular method is a method we came up with at our studio. There's also two ways of finishing off the fin. One is smooth, like this profile. And one is more a jagged edge, like this profile. We'll go more into that as we get further into the finishing of the largemouth bass skin mount. So let's get started. Now we need to pull our pins and our clips off to remove all of our carding since our bass is dried. Start with our paper clips. Pull out some of our eye pins. As you're removing it, you just want to do it carefully because this freezer paper that we had against our cardboard can actually tear if you pull it off too quickly. Some of the fin can stick to it, so you want to do that gently. They're going to pull out a little hard at first. You might need to turn them a little bit like I'm doing here. This is one of the harder ones to pull out, so we're just going to Now we're going to take the um, carding off the tail. By keeping that carding on there, that kept the fins straight during the drying process, so they didn't curl unnaturally. Okay. Going to continue to remove our cardings. I'm going to go ahead and take this T-pin out here on the anal fin spikes. Okay, now we're going to remove the T-pins from the pelvic fins. Again, I turn them a little bit because they do get a little stuck on the fin and into the form. Because we do we have to remember now, we did have mache underneath this skin against the foam. And that will actually help hold on to these uh, T-pins and make it a little bit harder to get out. So I turn them first, then I pull them off. Again, you want to be careful when you're doing this that you don't accidentally tear the fin or break the fins. It gets, it's very easy to do at this point. What's nice about using T-pins for this is it gives you a little bit of a handle to hold on to. Okay, now we're going to take the T-pin out of the spiny dorsal. Again, I'm going to turn it a little bit first and then just pull it out. Now we're going to remove our two eye pins from the front gill cover. These are also called upholstery pins. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and remove our carding from underneath the gill cover. Because we had freezer paper here, it's going to be easy to do. We're just going to press down and you'll you hear it kind of crack a little bit as we separate it. Just pull it away. Now we're going to remove the shims we put in between the gills. On the back side of the fish is just our um, tongue depressors or popsicle sticks, so they're easy to remove. You can just kind of look in there, see kind of where we're at. They're all naturally spread apart. We're going to do the same on the show side with our foam pieces, but to do that, we're going to use one of our cutting tools. 
This is just a curved scissors. The supply companies all carry these. I just kind of reach in and grab them out. If they break apart, that's fine. That's why we use foam in the show side. You can see we just have to go in there and clean it out. There's a little bit in there yet, but we'll remove that right before we do our actual epoxy work. At this time, I actually like to blow in here a little bit to get a little bit of foam chunks and pieces out that I couldn't get with my uh, scissors. You don't want to get that into your fin glue when we're doing our fin repairs. Okay, now inside the mouth, we're just going to remove our foam piece. To do that, I'm just going to grab onto it with my cutter, take it right out. You can see what it looks like in there. Now we have to just do a little bit of cleanup work on the fish before we do our actual fin repair work. What I mean by that is we need to get any little pieces of foam or mache or loose scales cleaned away. First thing I do is I look at the back side of the fins and make sure that there's no little foam or mache anywhere there. If there was, I could take a wire brush and just very carefully do that to get rid of it. Or I could take my tool, my skizzer tool, and just clean it away, or my knife. These fins are very clean, I don't need to do anything with those. Checking over the anal fin, everything looks good here. On the uh, tail fin, you can see where some of our mache had came through from the mounting process. We're going to need to get rid of that now. I'm going to take my knife, I'm just going to get underneath it, just kind of pop it up, take my cutter, and finish that off. We'll do the actual repair of this area with epoxy sculpt when we do the rest of our epoxy repair work on the fish, but I want to get it cleaned up now. Okay, I'm going to take my wire brush. I'm just going to get that cleaned all the way from the back of the tap. That was on there yet when we tried to do our gluing the glue's not going to stick to our fin correctly. So it's important that that is clean. I just blow it off a little bit to get all the dust away. It's a good idea to keep your workbench very clean as you're working. You don't want to get any of this in your glue when you're doing your fins. Okay, we look at our soft dorsal. Again, there's nothing here. It needs to be cleaned away. Same with the spiny dorsal. So the fins themselves are cleaned and ready, but we need to do something with our seam on the back of our bass. Now, as you can see, we have a very nice seam on this bass. We could have took the form down a little bit more and had this almost touching, but it wouldn't make the actual bass look as nice and big as it does here. So that's why we kept the seam a little bit bigger. And I would normally recommend having a seam at least this big for customer mounts. It makes the fish look just that much bigger and people never complain about that. If you did want to have the seam touching, we only would have had to bring the form down a little bit more. Also, you can see now the actual profile of our bass. How I carved this particular bass was a slight bit thinner here, but taller here to give the bass a bigger look. And that's a look that a lot of customers like. We could have actually made the bass a little bit smaller with the height, and a little bit wider, that's another option. But as you saw from the actual carving video, we wanted to make a nice, big, tall looking bass. So on the back seam, we're going to start out by removing some of these loose scales, as you can see here. If we keep those on, they're going to get in the way of our seam repair work. Okay, now we're going to take our wire brush and we're just going to scratch away any of the mache or any foam that might be here. Just blow that all away off our workbench. So this has now been prepped for our, our back seam work. What we're going to do is we're going to start out by fixing our fins 
and repairing them and making them flexible. And then we're going to flip the fish over and we're going to do our seam. And we're going to do the seam in two different parts. Half of the seam I'm going to repair with epoxy sculpt and scale it. And the other half I'm going to repair with muslin. Normally I do the entire seam with muslin. Uh, it actually holds up quite well over time and it will expand and contract as the skin dries and um, expands and contracts in different weather. However, I want to show you both methods now so you can have a choice. If you were, had a bass where you had a lot of curve out, you would definitely want to epoxy and scale this last half. One more quick thing we're going to be cleaning up in is in the mouth and in the gills. Again, we'll use our wire brush for that. Just getting all the loose foam and mache out. Then I blow in there just to get it all cleaned away. Same with our gills. You can see a little bit of foam in there. Get as much of that removed now as I can. Same with the back gills and underneath the gill cover. And then just blow that away. Now we'll get our bench cleaned up and we'll actually start the fin process. Now we're going to start the actual fin repairs and making the fins flexible so they're durable. If we didn't put any fin glue or backing on our fins, they would simply break just from being handled. They're very brittle at this point. I'm going to show you three different methods as we talked about in the introduction to this course. The first method I'm going to show you, I'm going to do on the anal fin, the soft dorsal, and the tail fin. Just as a note here, the spiny dorsal does not get any backing of any kind. It just gets glue. We'll go over that more later. The method I'm going to show you on these three fins is a method we developed in our shop. And it incorporates using a thin art paper. This would be like a paper you would put a painting or drawing on. It's very thin, but when it's mixed with our glue, it's very durable. And what it does, it actually gives us a foundation to do fin repair work. As you can see on our bass, there are a couple of splits here. These are natural, but if I wanted to repair these by using this method, it makes it very easy. Also, if you had a fin that was broken or missing a big section or very large splits, this is almost mandatory to use this kind of fin backing. So there's three separate pieces we need to cut for each fin to make this work. We'll start with our anal fin. We're going to start by cutting a piece that's bigger than the fin. You size it. You don't want to make it too big. It's harder to clip on. That size there is perfect. We're going to need to cut another piece the exact same size, again, of our art paper. Then we need to cut a piece of freezer paper the exact same size. So here's basically how this system works. You take our piece of art paper, it will be glued underneath. On top of that, we'll be putting our freezer paper because there's glue that could seep out. So that's part of our clamping assembly this is going to allow us to put our top piece on, which is our straightener piece. And then this will be clipped onto the fin. So it's glue on the fin, on the back side, our piece of art paper, a piece of freezer paper with the shiny side down, and then another piece of art paper on top is our clamping mechanism. The kind of fin glue we recommend here is Aline's Tacky Glue. You can get this at arts and craft stores, and you can also buy this online. This is a water-based glue that's flexible. This is the best fin glue we've ever used here, and we highly recommend this. So the first thing we need to do is grab a, a utility brush. This is what we're going to use to apply our glue to the back of the fin. You can see I'm actually pulling out a few bristles here. On a lot of these brushes, you have to get rid of some of the loose bristles before you use them. 
they can get into your glue and it won't look natural underneath your fin. You actually trim off some of those little excesses with your cutter. So we flip the fish over. Now this is the back side of the fin. We take our glue. It's fairly thick. Put some on the fin. Then take our acid brush. Give it a nice even coating. Again, we're only putting this on the back or wall side. We're not putting any glue at this time on the show side. That will be done later. What you'll see when I'm, we're doing fins, we only do one side of the fin at a time, no matter what method we use. That way you don't have excess curling. So now we have our glue on, we turn it back up. I put our piece of art paper on the the back side against the glue. I'm just pressing it with my fingers, wiping away any excess, taking our piece of freezer paper with the shiny side down, putting it on top, and then taking another piece of our art paper, putting it on top of that as our clamping mechanism. Just gonna grab some clips. We're simply going to paper clip it into place. What this is going to do is it's going to hold that fin rigid and straight during the drying process with the glue. The glue will be dried in about two to three hours. If you have a fan on it, it can go even faster than that. And then we just flip it over again, make sure there's no glue leaking out here. You don't want to necessarily put too much glue on, otherwise it will start to leak back and it's not necessary, you're just wasting it. So now we're gonna repeat the process for the tail fin, the exact same process. Out of the three different fin methods, this is probably the most durable and is going to last the longest. When we trim our fins, we can actually trim some of these grooves back in, right into this art paper if we want to get that look. Okay, so we have our art paper cut. The same procedure. glue applied. We don't want to overdo it. You can always put more on if we need to. Just spreading it out against all these fin rays. You want complete coverage when you do this. Okay, and we just flip it back over. I take my finger and just clean up a little bit of these glue runs that are just starting. You can see them here. I don't want that to be pushing through to the show side. If it does, we can cut it away later. Okay, we have our back side on. Put the freezer paper on, shiny side down. And then our other piece of art paper on top is our clamp. We start to grab some of our clips. I like to put a couple on each side to get started. I don't want to just start from one side, work around. You can see on the back, we've came all the way down with our paper. And we just keep clipping it all the way around using our small clips here to get started. We're going to be putting a couple of larger clips on the tail. But... Now these jumbo size paper clips work great for clamping tails on fish. On a bass like this, I like to put at least two jumbo clips on it. 
we flip it around, make sure there's no glue runs. You can also take your finger and kind of press this down and in. Make sure everything is, we have adequate coverage. Now we're going to go ahead and do our soft dorsal. Again, flip the fish over, only on the back side. Clean up any glue excess. I'll go ahead and cut my pieces quickly for it. What's nice about this fin paper too is it's white. You'll see how that'll actually help us during the painting process. Now we're just going to go ahead and clip this one on the same way. Freeze your paper down and our top clamp piece on. Again, you want to try to clip as far in towards the fish body as you can. You can't put too many paper clips on. We won't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and put a jumbo clip on here as well. Okay, flip it back around. Take my finger and press that glue in. And those fins now will need to dry for about two to three hours. Okay, now we're going to go over how to do a silk span fin, or in this case, what I recommend that's even better than silk span is simple coffee filters you can buy at any store. We're going to be using the coffee filter method on the two pelvic fins. Now normally I'd like to use just one fin method across the entire fish. Unless the fin is extremely damaged, then you could use this harder backed method in conjunction with silk span or just glue. But generally you want to try to stick with one method on the fish to keep it consistent. But for training purposes, I'm going to be using three different methods on this fish. To start out, we cut a piece of our coffee filter that's a little bit bigger than the fin we want to glue it onto. Okay, now we apply our glue to the back side or the wall side of the fin, just like we did on the other fins. Spread it out with our brush. We take our coffee filter piece and we just put it onto that glue we take our finger and we're just kind of pressing it into place, flip it back around and continue that process of just pressing it into place. Make sure there's no air bubbles in there, that everything is smoothed out and sticking everywhere, especially out on the ends. Flip it back around. We apply another coat of glue on top of that coffee filter. See, I'm getting it really good right next to the body of the bass. We just flip it back around to the show side to check our work and it looks good. We're going to go ahead and do the other pelvic fin the same way. Then I actually, as these are drying, I like to actually have the fish flipped over because as it's flipped over and drying, the fin itself will slightly curl this way the direction of my hand. And when we put our final coat of glue on later, 
it'll curl back to our original position we had it carted in when it started to dry. As you can see, I'm not putting the show side glue on at this time. If I did that, it wouldn't dry correctly. It would distort. We do that in a separate step, always two steps that way. Now we're just gonna do our other pelvic fin, same way. Rip off any excess glue. Just press our coffee filter into it. Flip it back around. Just brush the glue in. You can see I have a little bit of one of my bristles on my brush coming out. I'll just get rid of that now so it doesn't get onto our fin. Now we're going to do the pectoral fin. And, but the pectoral fin, we're just going to use glue. This is another method you can use. It's the least durable of the three methods, but it probably looks the most natural and it's the easiest to do. It's a little hard to see here. But I'm actually going to take the fin and break it out a little bit so we can get at the backside a little better and we'll fix that later during the epoxying process. I'm simply going to put some glue onto the fin, take our brush, spread it out. 100% coverage again, very important. Flip it back over. You can see we had a little bit of glue come onto the show side. We need to get rid of that now. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. And again, when this is drying now, we're going to flip this bass over so that gravity takes these fins and slightly curls them towards the table. So when we come back later and we put our show side glue on, they'll slightly bend back into our original straightened position if we put our glue on now, this fin would distort down towards the body of the bass and not look natural. I'm going to grab a couple of 2x4s. I'm just going to set them up like this. Actually, I'll move this down a little bit so you can see it. The reason I put two there is I don't want my fins that I just glued to be hitting the table because they'll stick to it. I want to make sure there's plenty of room underneath there. And in this position now, we can just let the fins dry, or we could actually do our repair work on the back, and that's what we're going to start on next.